In the last video, we saw this, how a cell sets up its resting membrane potential. And we saw that the main way it does it is that potassium leaves the cell, goes outside the cell, leaving behind negative charge on the inside. But something's weird about that, what we talked about in the last video, is that somehow, for some reason, potassium will keep leaving the cell until minus 90, and then it will stop leaving. Its concentration is still really high on the inside, and so it would want to leave by the concentration gradient, but for some reason it knows at minus 90, there's something special about this number, and potassium will just stop leaving the cell when the membrane potential gets to minus 90. What is special about this minus 90 number? We're going to explain that in this video to see how an ion decides whether it should leave or enter a particular cell. So let's get into it. Let's try to predict what potassium is going to do. So I'll draw a potassium leak channel and we know that potassium has a very high concentration on the inside of the cell. So, as we've seen, based on its concentration gradient alone, potassium would want to leave the cell from high to low. But as more and more potassium leaves, we saw that that would leave behind this negative charge. But since potassium is a positively charged ion, it is very attracted to negative charge. You might remember from chem that positive charge is attracted to negative charge. So, Based on electrical attraction, or we're going to call the electrical gradient, potassium now actually wants to stay in the cell. So now we have this weird decision to make. The concentration gradient is telling potassium to leave, and the electrical gradient is telling potassium to stay. It's like this tug of war between these two forces, the concentration gradient and the electrical gradient. So what should potassium do? Should it listen to the concentration gradient, or should it listen to the electrical gradient? How does it decide whether it should leave or enter the cell? And how does it know when to stop leaving or entering the cell? So it turns out this minus 90 value that we saw in the last video is special because what happens at minus 90 for potassium is that the electrical gradient and the concentration gradient are equal but on opposite directions. So it's kind of like if somebody grabs your right arm and starts pulling you to the right, and somebody grabs your left arm and also starts pulling you to the left, you would just stop. That's kind of like potassium. At minus 90, at what's known as the equilibrium potential, the electrical and concentration gradients become equal but point in the opposite direction, so potassium just stops entering and stops exiting the cell overall. And it turns out that there's a formula to be able to calculate this equilibrium potential, and that's what we're going to do now. This formula is known as the Nernst equation. And again, it's just going to try to calculate the membrane potential at which an ion will stop diffusing or moving into or out of the cell. So we're going to calculate the equilibrium potential for an individual ion. And we know that the equilibrium potential is based on two factors, the concentration gradient and the electrical gradient. So this formula to calculate the equilibrium potential should include both of those terms, the concentration gradient and the electrical gradient. Don't worry too much about this formula that I'm going to show you in terms of remembering it. I just wanted to show you what it represents and how to use it. So this Z term is basically just the charge of whatever ion you're working with. So for potassium, that's positive 1. And then what we're going to do is take the log of the concentration of the ion on the outside versus the inside, which is just representing how big our concentration gradient is. So this formula includes both of those things, concentration gradient and electrical gradient, or ion charge. So let's try using this formula to calculate the equilibrium potential for potassium and prove to you that it is minus 90. So I take that constant 61, divide by the charge of potassium, which is positive 1, and now I'm going to take the log of the concentration gradient. 
So I'll add the numbers for what the concentration of potassium is on the inside of the cell normally, much higher than it is on the outside. And if I plug that into this Nernst equation, and plug that into a calculator, because I ain't doing that manually, you, do, you get an equilibrium potential of minus 90 millivolts, exactly what we predicted. Now let's try to do it for a different ion like sodium. So if we just think about sodium, and I add the sodium leak channel, we know that sodium has a much higher concentration on the outside of the cell. So based on the concentration gradient, it would want to come in. But as it comes in, it makes the inside of the cell much more positive. And over time, by the electrical gradient, it would want to leave. The value at which these two gradients or forces become equal but opposite for sodium is positive 60 millivolts. Let's use the Nernst equation to calculate that value. So the equilibrium potential for sodium, we include the charge to represent the electrical gradient, just positive 1 for sodium. Sodium has a much higher concentration on the outside compared to the inside. And if we plug that into the Nernst equation and take the log, the equilibrium potential is 60 millivolts, just like we predicted. That's the value at which sodium will stop leaving and entering the cell, at which the two gradients become equal but perfectly opposite. Let's use the Nernst equation to calculate the equilibrium potential for chloride. We saw that chloride is much more concentrated on the outside of the cell. So by concentration gradient, it would want to come in. But then it'd start being repelled by that negative charge. And the value at which those two gradients become equal and opposite, and chloride stops entering or leaving, is the equilibrium potential. And for chloride, that value is around minus 63 millivolts. And let's prove to you that that's the case by using the Nernst equation. The equilibrium potential for chloride, at which chloride will stop moving in or out, based on the charge of chloride, which is just negative 1, and the concentration difference for chloride. Chloride is normally much more concentrated on the outside of the cell compared to the inside. And we plug that into the Nernst equation. And we get the equilibrium potential for chloride to be around minus 63. So again, this Nernst equation just tells you, here's where this particular ion will stop moving into or out of the cell because the gradients become equal and opposite. But we know that the resting membrane potential is not any one of these equilibrium potentials. It's kind of a combination of all three of these. The resting membrane potential is minus 70. And the reason that is, is because this is what your cell looks like. I'm going to draw out what your cell normally looks like, how many of each different kind of ion channel it has. And we're going to try to see why the resting membrane potential ends up being around minus 70. So it turns out that your cells have way, way more potassium leak channels than any other channel. So I've drawn out a bunch of potassium leak channels. Potassium wants to get to minus 90. By leaving the cell, it makes the cell really negative on the inside. But the resting membrane potential doesn't stay at minus 90 because we also have some other leak channels, for especially sodium leak channels, which allow some positive charge, so sodium, to leak into the cell and make that minus 90 value for potassium a little bit more positive to minus 70.